Joining us now is General Wesley Clark, retired four-star general of the U.S. Army and former NATO Supreme Allied Commander. General, always great to talk to you. Israel has well, systematically and quite effectively killed top leaders of both Hezbollah and Hamas. What do you make of this strategy? Well, it was a decapitation strategy, and uh, it's been effective so far. But Elizabeth, the thing is that you can't expect that the soldiers that are on the ground, the Hezbollah soldiers, are not going to resist viciously as Israel moves north into Lebanon. They will. And so you take out the top leadership, but they're, it's a military structured organization. Uh, the subordinates step up, and the people at the bottom are still in there. They're, uh, they're indoctrinated, they're trained, they're, they're willing to fight and die. And so it's going to yeah. be a tough fight for Israel. So, well, what's the psychological impact of that? I mean, it, it's got to rattle these two terrorist organizations. Not that anybody has any sympathy with, with these people and what they're doing. But talk about that, because part of military strategy is the psychology. Well, it definitely uh, rattles. But in this case, um, you know, the, the people at the bottom are still there. They're in position. They can't get out of position anyway. They're going to fight. Uh, and uh, it, it's just uh, another factor in the Middle East, another uh, escalation of anger and hatred that cycles back and forth between the various sides. Yeah. So uh, the psychological shock is not going to is not going to eliminate the fighting. This was an actual decapitation effort by Israel to take out the ability to, to, to reorganize, to plan, to adapt to the fighting that was coming in Lebanon. And, and, and this well, is after this, they, they took out their ability to communicate. Right, exactly. <clears throat> so what you left, got left are the forces that are, that are in place and uh, what limited communications they have. Doesn't mean it won't be a very tough fight. There are reports that the leader of Hamas, the new leader, because the old leader was assassinated by Israel a few weeks ago, the new leader of Hamas, Yahya Sinwar, is looking for, quote, a wider war with Israel, uh, even though he believes he won't survive it because it would, quote, force Israel to back down in Gaza. What do you make of those reports? Well, I think that um, Hamas has always looked for the wider war with Israel. And I think when they started this on October 7th, they had every expectation they could drag Iran into it. Iran um, didn't exactly want to come into the war at that point because they were working on their nuclear weapons program. They've got tremendous economic difficulties. The regime uh, was struggling with sort of what comes next after uh, Ayatollah Khamenei. And so there were a lot of factors there that made Iran hold back. They used Hezbollah to show sympathy, but Hezbollah didn't do much either. So there's yeah. been tension between Iran and Hamas. Some Democratic senators, meantime, are calling out Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, Chris Murphy uh, said, Senator Chris Murphy said that Netanyahu may be trying to time his military actions uh, against both Hezbollah and Hamas to influence the American election and may refuse any diplomatic ceasefire deals until after the election. Uh, I want to, President Biden addressed that concern today. Let's take a listen. No administration has helped Israel more than I have. None. 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 And I think uh, Bibi should remember that. And uh, whether he's trying to influence the election or not, I don't know, but I'm not counting on that. General, what do you make of these concerns by some Democratic senators that Bibi Netanyahu may be playing politics here? Well, Netanyahu has uh, has a long record of being uh, more friendly, more comfortable with uh, Republican regimes because Democrats typically side with the Palestinians on some of these issues, call for a two-state solution, et cetera. So, uh, and, and frankly, every country wants to influence the U.S. presidential election because the U.S. president's the most important person in the world in terms of international affairs. But in this particular instance, uh, BB is also trying to survive. He was, uh, you know, he was he was the leader when October seventh happened. He's responsible for all of this that happened at the start. So he's been uh, steadfast and wanted to go after Hamas, and uh, and then uh, the U.S. has held him back or tried to hold him back for this second front at Lebanon as long as they could. But 
you know, he's uh, decided that he's got to go after Lebanon and move them back in order to get the settlers settled. So he has some real uh, political pressures at home. Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.